We are here with an old friend, Andrew, from the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee. We chatted with him a few years ago at Nashville when we were at CycleCon there about this amazing tilting trike. Andrew, it's nice to see you again. Great to see you again, Gary. All right. So there has been some updating and changes uh, with the tilting trike project. Uh, can you bring us up to date? Sure. The main thing we've added is control of the tilting mechanism from the handlebars. So before, you may remember we had some crazy lever under the seat. You had to take your hands off the handlebars, which on a moving bottom bracket recumbent is a little bit tricky. So now we have it so that when you uh, open the ratchet, you just move the handlebars down into the riding position and it's free tilting. And when you come to a stop, you just push them up and it's back to being a rigid trike. And as before, uh, the thing that we think we're bringing to the table is everywhere in between those two extremes, you get a, uh, a hybrid behavior that's not exactly free tilting, not exactly rigid, but it just acts like a taller, more docile bike. Um, okay, so that's really interesting. And now also something that I think is new, but you can fill us in. He has some collaborations going on, no, uh, on with, uh, notably with uh, Cruise Bike. So tell us about that. Well, uh, Cruise Bike, very generously donated the whole front end, which solved the world of problems for us, introduces some quirks that riders take a moment to get used to, but means we had a bulletproof drivetrain for the competition. And uh, anyone who follows Cruise Bike knows that they've been actively investigating, could there be some way to uh, use a tilting trike to open up their technology to more riders? and. Uh, we have taken their feedback from uh, Jim and Maria wrote it in Nashville, and they said, well, one, it's too wiggly when it's rigid. So we have, it's still not like a Terra trike, for example, because one, we have a very narrow uh, axle track, and two, they're on the end of swing arms, but it's a lot more rigid than it used to be. And they said, well, of course, the suicide shifter under the seat will never work. So we've addressed that. And now the issues are, okay, so you control it from the handlebars, but how are you going to control it from the handlebars of a cruise bike, which doesn't have a pivoting uh, stem like that? And the other is, if the functionality meets their exacting specifications, how would we attach this tilting mechanism to a cruise bike? And they have four models, uh, the rear triangles are different on all of them, so we'd have to come up with some adapter system. But hopefully, soon we'll start working on those, those points. Okay, so I guess that brings us to, I mean, what everyone would want to know about is the commercialization of the technology. So, so progress on that, what, would you anticipate a product uh, being out there in the next, what, couple years kind of thing? What do you think? Oh, that would be a pipe dream of mine, but I can't speak for the Parkers, of course. <laughs> and uh, in addition to Cruise Bike, which we'd love to work with, we'd also uh, like to see if this technology can help in the cargo bike industry. Uh, so, for example, especially in Europe, there's a bunch of brands that have big buckets in the front, uh, upright seating behind, and then a small wheel in front that you steer either with a link or with cables. And um, we have developed at the Technical University of Delft this same type of thing, but intended for the front end. So you have to combine tilting and steering. And the next goal is to find some cargo bike company that has a frame that they're willing to donate to the cause that we can adapt and prove the concept. Okay, so how does the research, the design, the development actually work? So uh, at the at UWM then, do you have like, so you have a series of students that come through and do they work on this as well with you? Yes, uh, students built the majority of this from the head tube back. The reason we have these beautiful uh, carved swing arms is because the student had a buddy with a machine shop with a water jet cutter. And if you have a water jet cutter, the thing you want to know is, well, what the heck can we water jet today? <clears throat> so 
Uh, we have a, a new batch of students already in the fall that are excited about working on this. Uh, ASME has revived their human power vehicle competition, so we're thrilled to be able to go back and do that live. And they've added uh, uh, electrification. So we're fascinated by the possibility of how do you optimize the available electric power to do well in the competition. So uh, we will be looking at electrifying this in some way for uh, the competition this coming spring. All right, well, that sounds great. Very interesting stuff. We'll be uh, anxiously following what goes on with this and hopefully catch up with you at a later date with uh, even more development. So, Andrew, thank you so much. To it. All right, pal. Thanks. Thanks, Gary.